it just happens that, you know, I was born in 1925, so I was old enough to be conscious of uh, the consequences of the Great Depression, of which began in the, with the market crash in 1929 and went on to the sort of into the mid-30s, as a matter of fact. And it was, those were really, really bad times, and it took a long, you know, five, six years for the country to work its way out of that. Uh, and, and it, and it I, I think, uh, as a consequence of that very early experience, that uh, I, I grew up with, not with the sense that there was no tomorrow or that it didn't, nothing mattered. I grew up with the sense that it's possible to be poor. It's possible not to have enough money to buy food because there were just, you know, I had saw evidence of thousands of people for whom that was the case. Hooverville in Seattle was a terrible shanty town where people with no money lived. And so, I mean, it, it was, it made an impression on all of us who were growing up at that time that, you know, you can't take anything for granted. The, th the thing you wonder about uh, in the midst of uh, depression, cyclical things, big wars, uh, are, are, we, are we going up, down, sideways, or what? And it, it's very clear to me that, that society, in a very gradual but firm way, is, is making progress. We, we you know, the, the big example in our own country that good many of us have lived through to watch the civil rights movement, which is, you know, I don't think there's any serious argument that that hasn't been an improvement in our society at least, and to some extent with uh, international impact. But it's, it's, it's a wonderful and good thing, and I, I don't mean to suggest that it's all over. There's, there's more way to go, but it, the difference between today and 1960 is gigantic, and it's a it's a it's a function of of uh, thoughtfulness and of public will coming to respond to good thinking about the way the world ought to be. And now it seems to me we're in the midst of another. It seems to me clearly uh, upward movement, which is the conscientiousness and the concern about the world at large, as distinguished from just being concerned about our own neighborhood or our own country. Uh, and, and you know the the sense of some degree of responsibility for the people you know most particularly in in Africa and some parts of South Asia and and the 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 necessity for mankind to deal with those kinds of situations because we're you know, we're just instinctively uncomfortable as we should be with the fact that people starve to death thousands of people starve to death in some places and in some places. Thousands of people get killed by warlords, and thousands of people get killed in religious uh, squabbles. And, and, you know, that we know that that's not a good way for the world to be, and we know we, we, we want those kinds of things to go away. And, and uh, uh, so there is, there is a will which is going to work on, on those kinds of uh, problems over a long period of time. I would love to think that I'd have the opportunity to look down all this a hundred years from now. I don't, I don't hold out much for that point of view about it, but anyway, it, uh, what I'm really saying is that uh, I think society does improve in very gradual but significant fundamental ways, and that'll go on for decades, and it's wonderful.